Okay, welcome to part three of number 87, the craft switcher on the Columbian Western Railway. After all the overviews and strategy and track plans, now we're going to get down to the business of actually doing the switching. This is Selgar. The digester building is at the far end. The chip tracks are in front of it. All the chip hoppers have liftable end doors, so it's important that they have the right orientation. A friend and loader drives right inside, scoops up the chips, Pulls back, dumps them through a grating into a grizzly auger which takes them away. Behind the chip track is the power plant and mechanical building which receives equipment from time to time. And then behind that is the warehouse building. It has tracks inside for up to 12 40 foot boxcars and also has outside doors for loading 50 foot boxcars. The two additive tracks are next. We have a tank car unloading dock where you might see acid tanks, calcium carbonate, and bleaches unloaded. And then tucked right in behind the building is a track where three or four covered hoppers can be spotted. These are for cars that have solid additives. The switcher is pulling 40-foot boxcars. They're loaded with bales of pulp, which will be used to make rayon. It's always a bit of a guess to determine how many cars are actually inside the warehouse. Today it looks like we have five or six. Because we're dealing with so many cars being spotted and pulled in such a confined space, it's wise to approach the craft switcher by switching industries in chunks. Right now we're switching the interior tracks for the 40-foot boxcars. We're pulling the loads and then we'll shove the empties and we'll come back and work the tracks one at a time. This may all seem obvious, however I've seen a number of operators try and approach the craft switcher by pulling all the outbound cars from all the tracks first and then pushing all the deliveries. That might be efficient if you have a lot of space, but that's not the case with this job. The result of that approach is normally not very good. Cars get pulled out onto the main, the yard gets stuffed, and when a dispatcher has to get a train through the busy Castlegar Junction, everyone can get frustrated. Model railroading and model railroading operations should be challenging and fun, but not frustrating. So that's why I've actually made these videos to try and help people approaching the craft job for the first time. I'm not saying this is optimal, and I'm sure people who are more experienced than I am with the craft switcher have their own approaches. This is just one I think works pretty well. All the blue tag cars are bound for Cranbrook in the east. That last remaining yellow tag car that we brought from Nelson is a boxcar of machinery that will drop at the mechanical plant. Under that arched canvas awning is a small yellow trackmobile that Selgard can use to move cars around if there isn't a locomotive present. 
It's a non-operational Shapeways product. All these boxcars are eastbounds. Blue for Cranbrook and green to go to Nelson and eventually through the Burlington North and South to Spokane. We're going to drag all these cars back across the crossover and into the yard and hopefully the eastbound when it comes through will be able to take them away for us. While we're over in the yard we'll grab the remaining cars for Selgar. They're on the second double-ended track. Double-ended tracks are really convenient for this. Because all of the Selgar trackage is facing point, it allows us to get behind the cut and push it all the way to Selgar. That one off-spot boxcar on yard track number one is actually for the freight house, which is a trailing point move. So we're going to tack it on the rear of our locomotives. Then we'll pull forward on yard track number one and drop all those cars for the eastbound to take on its way through. We'll pull forward and couple onto the remaining cars that are bound for Selgar and the Pope and Talbot lumber mill. Before we head back, we'll deal with the empty wood chip hoppers that we've left on the siding. As was mentioned in the last installment, they're actually bound for several directions. There are westbounds, which we want to set out into the yard. These are orange tagged. And then there's cars that we will bring back to Nelson or drop in South Slocan, which we'll want to leave on the passing siding so we can make up our train using them. So we're going to push those orange westbounds into yard track number two so that when 81 comes through, it can pick them up easily out of the yard. The yard tracks are now pretty full. We've left five empty wood chip hoppers for number 81. It also has the CN additive cars in the yard for it to pick up. And we've left a cut of seven box cars for the eastbound to pick up as, on its way through. Those three empty chip hoppers are for us to take with us when we depart. As mentioned, all of the Pope and Talbot tracks are actually trailing point for us. So those three box cars have to be run around. That's also true of the three off-spot log bunks that were set off at the storage track in West Robson. So let's take all six cars and put them on the runaround track so that we can get behind them.
Now that the storage track at West Robson is empty, that makes a convenient place for us to swap off the cars that we need to spot while we go and pull the cars that are currently in those industry destinations. Just appearing from behind the Selgar mill is the pusher set from Farron. This 3,000 horsepower pusher set was ordered down from its station at Summit in order to help number 81 the westbound up. The crews prefer the visibility that the C-liners offer them over that of the H-liners. So the pusher set crew is going to turn on the Y and then station themselves in the yard to get ready for number 81. And the crew will stop here and go in and sign the register in the station. Back at Selgar, the switcher is pulling two 50-foot boxcars of pulp from the outside tracks. Now we're pulling out of track number one. These are all cars we'll take back with us to Nelson. Still in the additive tracks are two empty acid tank cars. At some point we have to move these to Castlegar Yard because they need to be picked up by the southbound evening hotshot freight, which will take them to the Kimiko Smeltler where they can be replenished. We'll set these cars we've just pulled to the side, and we'll go get the cars we left on the storage track. Mm -hmm. 
it's not great practice to block that road, but it's only for a minute or two, so we have permission. Those paper signs on the ground and on top of the buildings mark the industry spots. They correspond identically to what's on the tags on the cars. This makes it pretty easy to see whether cars have been correctly spotted, have been off spot, or need to be removed. All these cars now on our nose will head back to Nelson with us later in the day, so we're going to add these to the outbound cars that are on the passing siding. And that brings us to the end of part three. In part four of our series, we'll finish Stelgar and switch the Pope and Talbot Mill, shuffle a few cars that aren't in the right order for us, and watch as the pusher set pushes number 81 out of Castlegar.